All right. So the process, um, I'm going to get in a little bit to the process of underwriting. So the first thing you want to do before you get into a, a detailed underwriting is just see, do you want this property, right? Is it, is it even advantageous for you to, um, to buy it? And one thing that I say is when you're trying to choose a market, choose a place that makes sense for you. All right. For instance, a lot of people I've talked to investors in California and they're sort of all over the place. I like the Carolinas. I like Georgia. I like the Southeast. I like the Midwest. I like Texas, you know, Nevada. It's, it's too much. Right. Um, and you could put too much detail into just market selection. It's not something that you should look over easily, but I try to make it simple. Just Look for places where you have a need to be. Maybe there's a place where you have family at. So you're already visiting your family. That was my case. Maybe you have uh, business relationships there, friends who are there. Maybe it's a place that you want to ultimately retire. And so buying in that market may, may make sense to you. If you want to retire in Florida, maybe you look at a market in Florida because if you set up, you've already got a reason to go there to look at properties, the vacation, et cetera, right? But a couple of things that we do is get market data. And market data, I'm looking for the economics of any given market. So you're talking about population growth. You're talking about jobs growth. You want to see job data. You want to see low unemployment. Um, all these things sort of contribute to a growing market because it's easier for you to make your deal work if you're in a market that's already uh, appreciating, right? There's already a demand for, for jobs and housing there. It helps you your job as an investor become easier. And one of those is uh, citydata.com. They've got a lot of data. Justicemap.org has a huge amount of data. Um, not that, not huge in as far as the quantity, but in the value, right? Uh, the quality of the information they they provide is is really useful, right? So. Um, city data, you're going to get those major market indicators, okay, what, what's the population doing, what's the median household income doing, uh, job growth, those sort of things. But real estate is local, very local, um, to the street level, local, and just this map uh, provides you with that. So I'm going to stop this for a minute and go go to it. So if you go to justicemap.org, which is where I'm at right here, and you can... Let me just go with a base map, right? So right now, this is a this is Memphis, Tennessee, and this is definitely an area. I don't know if anybody's invested in Memphis, but this is definitely an area where you need to know uh, street level data. But first, you just sort of see the city, but you can drill down into various areas and, and get really detailed. But what I like to do is come over here to this income button, and immediately you find a lot of useful information, okay? So you have the red areas that are gonna be lower income, dark blue, higher income. So when you're looking at deals, you wanna get down to that street level and say, what am I looking at? So I'm just gonna click this random box here. This income is $22,902, okay? That does not bow well for you going in and trying to implement some value add strategy, right? That is that is very low income or well, 22,000. Let's go over. This is probably not even a mile and click on this box. $60,000 in median household income. Now, if you're underwriting deals, brokers, what they will do is they'll give you a property over here in this 22,000 and they'll give you a comp this over here in this light blue of 60,000 and say, hey, you know, all you got to do is do a light value add, you know, throw some paint up and you're going to get this added value. Well, you're not, right? You're in a $22,000 per year market. And let me tell you, people don't travel that far. There's not going to be anybody who's living over here in a $60,000 per year household income who's going to send their kids to school over here, it just doesn't happen. And I mean, I'm, I'm talking in overgeneralizations right now, but 
it, it doesn't happen that often, if at all, right? So you need to know the street data. And I love Justice Maps for that. So I think that this is huge if you to um, you know, understand it. And it's free. You don't have to pay a dime for this. But, you know, you look here, you see a $40,000 uh, neighbor in, income. And you can also do some other things in advanced mode, right? So um, if you go to um, advanced, what I like to go over here is income change. So if you click on income change, what you're now seeing is places in the market that are starting to appreciate in value where values are going up. So you can look at a property here and say, all right, well, this had a 7% growth in income um, since this data was put out, right? And this stopped, what, 2017, right? Okay, so valuable information. You come to another area, 25% oh, decline in income. So where do you want to be? You want to be in these areas that are growth. What you may do if you just sort of play around with the map, you'll see an area where maybe um, maybe it's $40,000 a year in income, but that's trending upward. And maybe that gives you a little bit of momentum if you know some things about the market to project uh, that it's going to continue to increase, right? So justicemap.org is that website. You definitely want to check that out. All right, where is my presentation at? Uh, okay, and let me get my magic, my magic uh, button over here. Boom, that guy. And as I remember, I'm going to swap. Okay, so we're back. Um, so that was market level. Now we're going to go like a layer beneath that and start talking about them. Now we're actually going to get into some numbers and you can do a full underwriting with some of those calculators. You can also do quick and dirty. And for a while, my quick and dirty was around that 1% rule. And I use that very roughly, right? Um, really like to see north of that, maybe like a 1.2, 1.3, 0 0.9. But if I'm buying at uh, $60,000 a unit, and the rents are $600, that is a deal that I should probably go into and, and do some more further analysis. And you would think that that is the, the way that you could do it all the time, but it is not. Um, they have some really attractive debt products right now, and I'll talk about that a little bit later too. But there, there are debt products right now that allow you to do two, three, four, five years of interest only. And so if you've got that attractive debt behind you with a value add, sometimes you can go way below 1% uh, or what you would normally think. So you have to sort of combine those two. If you're buying it, you're doing principal and interest payments. You probably want to stick to somewhere around that 1% rule before you even uh, dig deep. If you if you've got the ability to get attractive bridge financing or you're doing a larger deal where you can get five years of, of IO or something like that, then you may want to consider doing an evaluation because you're probably going to find that you can do a lot higher than um, or you can go a lot lower than the 1% rule. All right. So that's just a, a brief rule of thumb for that. Um, again, determine the sales price. Know your buy, know your sell.